In the face of diversity, we're presented with a pivotal choice. Let it define us, destroy us, or strengthen us. This principle isn't just a mantra. It's a testament to, to human resilience and adaptability. Showcase through the inspiring Janine Shepard, a cross-country skier whose life took an unexpected turn. You see, in 1986, Janine was going to the Olympics. She was about to realize her dream of becoming Australia's first ever medal winner at the Winter Games. But a freak accident happened and would change her life forever. While she's on a training bike ride, Janine was struck by a truck. Her last memory before the accident was looking up and feeling the sun on her face. But when she woke up hours later with a body that was just consumed with pain. Her neck and her back were broken in six places. She had five ribs broken, a broken right arm, broken collarbone, and several crushed bones in her feet. The right side of her body had been just ripped off by the impact and was filled with gravel from being dragged along the road. She had a head wound so severe that parts of her skull were exposed. She had lost five meters of blood and doctors didn't think that she would survive, but somehow she did. And even though she was paralyzed from the waist down, the surgeon that performed the surgery considered the operation a complete success. Her lower spine was shattered into thousands of pieces, literally, forcing doctors to spend hours plucking shards of bone from her spinal cord. Then they removed two ribs, rebuilt her back, and fused the bones together with rods and pins. She had little movement in her entire body except for just her one big toe, and that's it. The doctors explained the damage to her central nervous system was just permanent. She was a partial paraplegic and would never have the feeling from her waist down again. Fast forward some years later, Jenny was giving a TED talk. She recounted her first memories after the accident, drifting in and out of consciousness in the spinal ward. She had an out-of-body experience and recalls herself asking, why would I ever go back to a body that's so broken? But then she remembers hearing some voice that said, come on, this is our opportunity. About 10 days later, she finally mentally returned to her body and spent the next several months lying in her room with five other spinal cord injury patients, some of them completely paralyzed. During the talk, she talked about the close bonds formed among the patients in the spinal ward. Quote, because we were all paralyzed, we didn't know what each, other's, what each other looked like. How amazing is that? How often do you get to make friendships judgment-free, purely based on spirit? She continued, lying paralyzed in the spinal ward, there were moments of incredible depth and richness and authenticity and connection that I had never experienced. Six months later, she was released from the hospital. A nurse pushed her outside into the wheelchair into the warm sunlight that she hadn't felt in a month. She didn't even send to herself, how could I even take this for granted? Now, the nurse that rolled her out warned that she would be depressed at home, but Janine the machine doubted that warning. But unfortunately, depression did set in. Self-pity overwhelmed her. It wasn't until she remembered her friends in the spinal ward that her feelings of depression finally were lifted. Her friend Maria, only 16 years old, was a quadriplegic, fully paralyzed. Though she was unable to move or even speak, Maria always smiled. Janine asked the audience during her talk, quote, had she found that level of acceptance? That's when I realized it wasn't just my life, it was life itself. I knew then, just like before, that I had a choice. I could either keep fighting this or I could let go and accept not only my body, but the circumstances of my life. She continued. Maybe being at rock bottom is the perfect place to start. I was free to explore life's infinite possibilities. Janine had an amazing recovery, learning to walk again with only a slight limp. Almost immediately, she began working on her next dream to be a pilot and become the youngest director of Australia's Civil Aviation Safety Authority. Throughout her recovery, Janine showed astonishing spirit, wisdom, and even gratitude. She accepted her fate and adapted, building an astonishing career when others might have been mentally sidelined from the trauma. I mean, how often do we play the pity game with our own setbacks? How often would you say, why me? Or why is my body always breaking down? Or 
how come I can't do the things I used to? The truth is, it's easier said than done. But Janine's story shows us a higher road, one of acceptance and adaptability. Now, you don't have to, and you shouldn't accept pain and movement dysfunction as part of aging. Those things need to be addressed and eradicated. But if you can let go of your preconceived notions about what you're supposed to look like and what exercises you should be able to do, you'll be wiser and capable of addressing the obstacles in front of you and moving past them. The real challenge is accepting your current limitations without letting them discourage you. Instead of asking, why me? Ask, what's the next step? Examples like Janine's story show us the mind's capability to overcome adversity and the body's capacity to repair itself. It's agonizing to accept, but there is always a slippery light, always an alternative solution, a way around obstacles and setbacks. It starts with the right mindset. It continues with the pursuit of knowledge and a plan of re resolving pain, improving joint function, and rebuilding your body from the ground up. If you're looking for knowledge to find pain relief, then subscribe, give the video a like, and share this story with someone in need.